Hello my loves, welcome back to another vlog. This one is a continuation directly from my last one that I kind of needed to start here because I will not look like this. I will look like this, but I will have an addition right here because I am getting a tattoo this afternoon and I am both very excited and kind of scared just because of how big it's going to be and because it is, like it's going to be here basically. Um, so it's going to be very there. <laughs> But we're starting this vlog off with some exciting stuff and there's going to be quite a few exciting things happening in this video as well because Becca's coming to visit, we have an event, we've got all sorts going on so I don't yet know what I'm going to be reading <laughs> but we'll figure that out as we go. But I did just want to start this off to give a little bit of context to what you're about to see but um, come and get a tattoo with me I guess. <laughs> Who's here? <laughs> there she is. Hey. I have a wild Becca coming to stay. For I thought Easter. I had a dribble on my jumper, but it was just a. <laughs> <laughs> we have Becca here for Easter weekend. Uh, we're going to show her the famous river walk, and we have many oh, plans <laughs> for uh, the weekend. Except we don't actually have yeah, any plans. We don't have a plan. We just have ideas, really. Yeah. So we'll see where we go. But we are going to an event tonight for the atlas six by olivia blake it's going to be in the caves it's going to be really cool I'm so uh, vibes hmm. not excited to put my pants on yeah. that are not she's currently just walking around with a jumper on she's naked as always <laughs> i don't because everybody, everybody associates me with not wearing pants and it's just it's not true i do wear pants confirmed <laughs> the world's best pants <laughs> so yeah we're gonna just have a little bit of an explore and go to the event tonight. So no doubt we shall show you that and you may see some other friends popping up in this video. I realise that I... I realise that I haven't actually been updating you properly through this vlog so far so I thought I would just sit down give you a proper update because one, I haven't shown you my tattoo since having it done at least not properly so I will put a picture on the screen of just after I had it done and also the day after as well because I am currently wearing a jumper so you can't really tell right now but the general questions to do with having a tattoo are generally how long did it take and did it hurt so this for me took about two hours I didn't have to wait too long for the tattoo artist to actually draw it because she already had it prepared beforehand but it was a pretty speedy process and I actually found it quite relaxing I don't think it hurt really at all it only really hurt towards like my armpit I guess like the leaves that were closest to that but otherwise I actually found it quite relaxing and I almost fell asleep because I had to just lay down for two hours and I can fall asleep anytime anywhere and that was really a testament to that so um yeah it was it was quite something but I actually found it to be a really enjoyable experience and it wasn't sore afterwards it has been itchy but that is it so I am so so pleased with this I absolutely adore it and so many of you guys have been complimenting me on this as well so thank you so much if that was 
was you. I'm just so thrilled to have it there and it's already given me so much more confidence and stuff so yeah that was an exciting thing to happen and then as you guys have seen <laughs> Becca is here. So far we have done a lot of walking. She arrived here yesterday. We did just some general wandering around yesterday. We met up with Jean Cody. We went to the Atlas 6 event which was so cool. It was in the caves in Edinburgh and there was all this like ambient mood lighting and Olivia Blake is so sweet and she just rambles. She's so excited about everything and just rambled on and on and it was just so interesting to hear her talk. I'm so excited for book two. She was given some kind of like hints to what was coming up and I am just so so excited for that second book. It kind of made me want to reread the first one but it wasn't too long ago when I read it so I'm going to hold back on that for now. So then today we just generally did some shopping and I was going to give you a haul but I have not brought any of the stuff in with me so hold that thought. <laughs> okay so we went into a couple of bookshops today and I did pick up a couple of books and I feel like there's going to be a couple of more books maybe throughout the rest of this vlog because we are doing more bookshops tomorrow but we'll see. But these two are actually ones that I'm hoping to read very soon so I did decide to just get them. So the first one is A Secret History of Witches by Louisa Morgan. This one is one of those books where I haven't heard too many people talk about it but I have seen it absolutely everywhere in the sense that in actual bookshops I just seem to see this one every single time and I've never quite picked it up but then one of my friends was just like if you are in the mood for witchy books which is what I've been reading recently you need to read this book and so I picked it up. I did have a £10 voucher for Waterstones so I basically got this one for free. <laughs> but this one says Brittany 1821 after Grandma Urshul gives her life to save her family their magic seems to die with her. Even so the OKS fight to keep the old ways alive practicing half remembered spells in hope of a revival. With each new generation the struggle continues and when Will to looms, magic is needed more urgently than ever. Not for simple potions or visions but to change the entire course of history. So yeah, I'm excited for this. I've been in such a witchy kick recently. I have heard that this is a historical take but with magic in the sense of like there is genuine fantasy style magic in this so really excited for that. And then the second book I picked up was Jade City by Fonda Lee. Now I, I've been vaguely interested in this just because of how much other people love it but I never thought it would be a book I picked up or prioritised in any way. This is the Patreon book club read for May and June which was chosen by my patrons. Quite a few of them submitted this as the book club read so here we are. I'm going to be reading it. So all I really know about this one is that it is a kind of mafia fantasy and I believe Jade is a kind of substance that everybody is fighting over. <laughs> that was a really really crap explanation but I just know that everybody loves this. I am hoping that I will follow suit but honestly I don't know what to expect because like I said it's not really one that I ever thought I would prioritise but here we are. <laughs> I did also pick up a few other little random bits and bobs so Becca made us go to Lululemon which is not a place that I would ever usually go into. I did pick up a couple of things. So they had this uh, tank top, I think would you call it, in a burnt orange colour. It looks brighter on camera than it is, but I thought that this would be really good to help style with long skirts in the summer, which is not the purpose of it. It's meant to be active wear, but whatever. <laughs> And then I did also pick up this jacket which is not something that I thought I would have bought but I saw this on a mannequin and was just like that just looks so cool and it's designed for running but I am planning to use this when I go out on my many many outdoor walks because it's so hard to try and get a coat that is suitable for the long ass hikes that I go on because it's just always too warm to wear a coat but then if you don't wear one you'll be freezing. Now because of the material of this it's like really stretchy stuff that keeps the heat in and it's just got like loads of little features that are really handy so for instance the back of it has a little vented part you can hook your thumbs through and have the sleeves come down here and it's just it's just really good. The material is super soft as well so I think this is going to get a lot of use for my outdoor activities. And then we went to Lush and I picked up the comfortable bath. It's my favourite one. I love it. So this is what it looks like. You just crumble a little bit into your bath and you've got lots of lovely bubbles. Then I did also pick up this shower gel called Sticky Dates which Becca did also get as well and she made me smell it and I was like okay I need that. This is a kind of syrup that has vanilla and sandalwood in it and it just smells absolutely divine and I have no regrets so yeah. Now I do actually also have a couple of unboxings um, for the same 
thing. I just figured I would throw this in here because it's kind of a little haul section in the vlog so. So this is what the witch casket boxes look like. These are the May and April boxes. I don't know which is which because they did arrive in quick succession so they've been all kinds of bundled up but the lovely Deb and Ella who are the people who run witch casket have very kindly sent these to me so thank you so much to them for sending these my way but I have genuinely bought these myself before and the only reason I stopped was just because of funds and stuff so I am so thrilled to be kind of working with them and receiving these boxes again because I found these so helpful for just learning more things about you know like witchy tools or like even just ingredients and stuff because it's kind of hard to know where to start a lot of the time but I feel like these are really good starting points for just getting into it so I'll just pick one at random and see oh this one is the March one so we are going in order so you open it on up you have the witch casket logo and then a little kind of information booklet so as I said this is the March box for the moon magic theme and already I know I'm gonna love this one because I love celestial stuff and the first thing that we have in here is this beautiful art print which I am definitely going to be adding to my little desk area full of prints and I also love the whole like third eye um, design as well I've got it literally tattooed on me so that's perfect. Then we have this little pouch which is a waning moon letting go ritual kit. Contains everything you need to release that which no longer serves. So you have the instructions inside and then all of the ingredients you would need. So these are also numbered just in case you needed a bit more help with the guidance. And yeah I just think it's really cool that you can get like whole kits to help you along in your journey. There is this lovely suede bag with this kind of silver design on it. Oh it's a wand! That's so cool! Look at that! I don't know too much about wands or how to use them or anything so this is something that I will have to look into more but I have seen them around a lot and I'm always very intrigued so uh, I'm gonna be having a little look-see into that. We have some kind of scroll situation going on. Oh! It's a wall hanging. Oh, that's pretty. So you've got the string that you can hang it up on and then that's the design. So it'll hang that way. I actually really love that. Like that is something I will genuinely hang up probably in my bedroom actually, like next to my bed or something. That is beautiful. We have an enamel pin with a very similar design. We also have a crystal. There it does tend to be a crystal in every single box. So this one is at Rainbow Moonstone and it does tell you a little bit about the properties of that. We have a Moon Phase Affirmation deck. So this is the design on the back. It's very similar to the theme. And then on the other side, we just have a very simple line work with all of the affirmations on it. I don't really use affirmation cards too much because I do just typically stick to the normal tarot decks, but again, it's something I do want to look into more because I'm not entirely sure how you are meant to use them, but this is why we learn. <laughs> Another thing that they do tend to have in every box is tea. So I really love this because I love trying different types of tea, but I don't like buying full boxes of it in case I don't like it. So you do tend to get a couple of tea bags in every single box. So this one is the Full Moon Witch's Brew, which apparently is protective chrysanthemum and dandelion. So I'm very intrigued about that. You can really smell that one. That's quite nice actually. We have this very interesting shaped bag. Oh see, this is really helpful. Okay, this is a bottle that you can use to harvest moon water, which I just think is really cool. See, this sort of thing is actually really helpful and quite hard to source if you don't already have something like this. And then finally, another couple of things that they do also have in every box. A box of incense. So this one is a protective and calming blend of cinnamon and lavender. I love cinnamon and lavender separately. Oh, that smells very specifically of the Jawbreaker Fireball flavor. Oh, and then we do also have this scroll which has a whole bunch of information. It's different every month. Sometimes it's kind of like plant properties or it's just always related to the theme in some way or another. So this one, for instance, a whole bunch of information on moon magic so it's a lot to learn from so we have all of the moons listed of every month in this one so I love that I love that so much and we're not done yet because like I said I do also have the April one so if we open up this one oh April has the element of air as a theme so again we start off with this beautiful art print depicting the element of air 
We have this little booklet of information saying Enchanting Book of Elements, an overview of the elements of earth, air, fire, water and spirit. Learn how to represent and work with each element to enhance your magical practice. Lovingly written by Witch Caskets Deb Robinson. Oh my god that's so cool! These boxes are so handy when it comes to learning. So we have a wishing powder kit. So again you have all of the ingredients and an instruction booklet on how to use it. Another thing that is just helpful to have an incense holder. I have so many of these dotted around my house and I feel like I still never have enough of them so we love that. We have another little information scroll and more incense so this one is marjoram and lemongrass. Oh that one smells like refreshers. <laughs> Apparently everything smells like sweets today. Oh we have a little display thing. I've seen quite a lot of people put crystals inside these which I think is just so cool. I don't know how I would use it but I'm sure I'll find a use for it because these are quite handy. <laughs> Air element hanging chime. Oh my god I am so putting this in my window. <laughs> That's so cool. I feel like every so often you get bells from Witch Casket and I'm just jingling everywhere. <laughs> I'm gonna hang that up right after this. And then again we have this pin, we have a blue quartz crystal with a sigil on, and of course some tea again. So this is lemongrass and peppermint. Ooh, I love the lemongrass theme in this. Oh my god, so many goodies, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited to kind of spend the time collecting all of this information together and you know making a note of it in my own little notebook and just learning how to use them all so yeah super chuffed with that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed having a little sneak through as well. Of course I'll leave information to Witch Casket down below. If you want to check them out for yourself I highly recommend you do so. I absolutely adore them and I just think it's a subscription service that is really cool so yeah. Finally my god I've been talking for an age but I wanted to tell you that I'm going to be starting Guild tonight by Raven Kennedy. This one is a fantasy romance self-published inspired by the myth of King Midas. I don't know if there's fairies in this series, I don't know, but I just know this follows the perspective of one of the women that King Midas has gold touched. If you don't know the myth of King Midas, it's basically somebody who wishes for riches and ends up almost being cursed in that everything he touches turns to gold, which sounds like a good thing apart from when you, you know, kill people because you are turning them into gold so we are reading from the perspective of someone who has gone through that but like I said it is a fantasy romance and it is apparently full of romance intrigue and danger so don't know too much about it I know that a lot of people love this and I'm really hoping I do because I could do with a new fantasy romance to become obsessed with so myself and Becca are gonna go and read for the evening and I'll let you know how I get on with this one. <laughs> my brain is like this way. Very different aesthetics. I love that.
now Monday the 18th, I want to say. Becca has now left, she has gone home. God bless her, she is ill, so I hope she is better by the time this video goes up. But I have had such a good weekend, a very sociable weekend. I am tired. <laughs> My introverted self is just like, I need a nap for about three days now. But it was good, it was all worth it. So I know I mentioned earlier on that I would tell you about some more books that I bought, but I have actually just filmed a book haul because yes, it did get to that extent. So I will leave the book haul for that video. It will be coming very soon, hopefully within the next couple of weeks because there will be a little bit of a gap between this video and that one with it being at the end of the month. So we're gonna have TBRs and wrap ups coming up soon, but it is coming, it is filmed. I just need to get it up and ready. I have done very little reading over the course of this weekend, but I did start reading Guild and I am about 74 pages into it. And I can tell I'm going to fly through this. Something about the formatting of this book just makes it so easy to read. And I am planning this evening to just have one hell of a self-care evening have the sort of bath where you just lay there for like over an hour, do all the face mask and hair treatments and everything you can possibly do. I will check back in with you when I do actually do that because right now I don't have anything more to say other than Becca has now gone. I've had a lovely weekend meeting up with lots of different friends and yeah, now it's time for some downtime. Hello my loves, I have literally just come off for reading sprints. It's currently the Tuesday before this should be uploaded and yeah, I wanted to give you an update on Guild because I'm now 250 pages in. I'm not gonna hold it up just because it does reflect them in light. I'm really enjoying it. I do have a few gripes with it, namely that there are some things that just sound a little bit ridiculous and I think that if these things were introduced more slowly and coherently into the plot I do think that they would seem more like an established thing within them rather than just like some dramatic plot element that is introduced really randomly and also just maybe if they were named something different. I can't say what it is I have a gripe with without spoiling an element of the plot so it is kind of hard for me to describe but there's just something that happened and I was like, oh, that sounds kind of cringy. So I do think that that could have been adjusted, even just to give it like a fantasy name or something so that it didn't sound quite so on the nose. With that being said, I do find it strange. Trying to figure out how old the main character is. I don't know if it has stated it at some point and I've just missed it, but to me, she reads quite young, but it is very much a dark fantasy romance. So there is instances of sexual abuse. There are quite crude jokes and things, sexual language, things like that so I'm finding it a little bit jarring because she does sound like an narrator who would be in a young adult book placed within an adult fantasy romance so I'm finding that a bit jarring but I don't know if it is just because we haven't really seen her interact with too many people yet so her voice just seems a little bit strange to me but ultimately that is one of the things that is making me sympathize with her. I can't really say that I like our main character Oren but she does have my sympathies just because she is so inherently lonely that she keeps latching on to anybody who even glances in her direction. She's been calling somebody a friend after speaking to them like twice because they are the only person who is actually nice to her in any way shape or form and it's just really sad to read and I am kind of intrigued to see how we go with that because I feel like if that was me I would just inherently distrust everybody if I was so used to just being left to my own devices and nobody wanting to kind of speak to me like a human whereas she seems to have gone the opposite way in that she really wants to trust everybody. She knows that she shouldn't, but she really wants to because she wants to have that kind of connection. And I am finding it quite interesting to read about. So yeah, I don't really know where the story is going. It's already taken quite a few turns that I wasn't really expecting. I feel like it's quite a slow moving story, but we'll have little pockets of like really dramatic things happen. So. I'm intrigued to see what happens in the last 100 pages or so that I have. Don't really have any predictions or anything, but yeah. I've heard there's fairies in this and I want to know where they are. <laughs> I'm keeping a lookout for them. I look like trash right now because it's like somewhere past 11 p.m. I'm kind of ill, but I did just want to check in and let you know that I have now finished reading Guild. I'm currently on Patreon reading sprints, so it's been a very sprint heavy week for me, but it does mean that I have managed to finish this book. and I'm so pleased to have finally done so finally understand what the hype is about. Although saying that, I will not be rating this book as highly as other people did because even though I did really enjoy it and I do find it really addictive, I do have a few gripes with it. I do think that this one could have done with a little bit more extending so that the things that were introduced into the plot would have a more seamless transition into the plot line because it did seem like it was pretty slow moving but then we just have like random bursts of 
energy action going on and it would just be like random plot points that were really really dramatic especially towards the end this book is brutal so major trigger warnings for sexual abuse it's very violent in that sense and while it's not like overly explicit it's also not off the page either so do be wary of that if you are wanting to read this i am very intrigued to see where book two goes because i think I can kind of tell where the romance aspect of this fantasy romance series is going. You don't really see too much romance in this book specifically, so it was quite interesting to experience that because I know that a lot of people really hype up the series in this book. So I would have kind of expected more romance from it, considering that's what it's known for, but I also know that in a lot of fantasy romance series, the first book doesn't necessarily have a lot of that, so didn't really take me by surprise, but just something else worth noting. But yeah, I think I would rate this like a really solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. It's not a new favourite or anything, it's not something that I'm obsessed with, but I will continue with the series and I did have a really fun time reading it. And I do imagine that this is a series that will just get better as we go on because the books are extended and length so hopefully that means that the extension that I was hoping for in this book when it comes to laying out some of the plot is actually used within the next books going forward. I did actually just receive the third book because I do already have books one and two and I wanted to get the third one especially before Rare which is happening in May which is a romance author event that I will be attending. They do have a few fantasy romance authors going so I wanted to make sure that I had Raven Kennedy's books before going so that I can get them signed and yeah very happy to have ticked another one off the TBR, especially the fantasy romance TBR because I have had a little bit of a lull when it comes to reading fantasy romance and this was one which I have been prioritising in my mind so it was good to finally get around to it but yeah with that being said I am going to wrap up this vlog here if you made it this far into the video then leave the bunny emoji or like anything that you associate with Easter so chick bunny eggs, I don't know, since most of this vlog was over the course of Easter weekend. And of course, if you have any other thoughts as well, I would love to hear them. But for now, I shall love you and leave you, like get on with the rest of your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time with a new video. Bye!